All right, here we go, 23.2, the continental margin. We have three objectives here. First is to describe the parts of the continental margin. Next is compare and contrast active and passive continental margins. And then we have explain the origins of the submarine canyons. We have a long list of vocabulary. Several of those are just parts to a larger piece, um, which, is, which are the continental margins. So you can get those vocabulary terms down, but we will want you to be able to label those parts of a continental margin and, the, and be able to compare and contrast the two different types. So let's start with what a continental margin is. It's the underwater edge of a continent. The key idea here is that continental margins are the underwater edges of continents and they include several types of topographical features underwater. So if we start with a cross section, we have continental crust, then we have oceanic crust, the lithosphere, we have the sediment built up on the ocean floor. We have the continental shelf, continental slope, and then we have the continental rise and the abyssal plain. These features make up the continental margin. Now the continental shelf extends from the shoreline out towards the continental slope. So from this line right here, we see the coast or the shoreline, and it goes out, and the shelf extends in, until this intense decrease in depth. So the continental slope begins at the shelf edge where the water depth begins to increase rapidly. Sediments become unstable on the slope and tumble downward to form the continental rise, this area right in here. Now the continental rise is considered part of the ocean basin. There are two different types of continental margins. Look at this diagram. There are active continental margins and passive continental margins. Which one of these or which of the two different types of continental margins is this diagram? Now if you said passive, very good job. Now an active and a passive, there's one major difference between the two and it has to do with the continental rise. I'll show you that in a little bit. Now continental margin can be active or passive. An active continental margin is found along a subduction zone or a transfer fault and is very narrow and very steep. Now, both an active and a passive have a continental margin that begins with the shelf, has a slope, but now here's the difference. An active continental margin has a trench. Now, you remember in the diagram before, and I'm going to show you again in a, in a little bit, a passive continental margin has a rise. Now, both of them continue on into the ocean basin or the abyssal plain. Now, a passive continental margin is not located along any plate boundary and is broad and less steep. So again, we have the continental margin that has the shelf and the slope, but in this case, with the passive continental margin, we have a continental rise, not a deep sea trench. And it goes out into the ocean basin, which includes the abyssal plain and several, of, several other features. Now, submarine canyons are sometimes bigger than the Grand Canyon and slice through the continental shelf all the way clear to the ocean floor. Now some submarine canyons may have formed during the ice age or from a powerful turbidity current. So the next question is what is a turbidity current? Now turbidity currents are great landslides of mud and sand. Their speed make them powerful agents of erosion carving out large channels. Here's an example of what a turbidity current might look like as a cross-section and looking underneath the ground underneath the ocean floor. Now I urge you to look at some of the questions at the end of the section. So there are three that you can try to see if you have a better understanding or a good understanding of this section.